let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The revealed light, everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of true leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Golden text, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28-29. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Introductory spiritual chorus. I have seen the light, the light of God. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh my soul. Quote. God is a consuming fire. Beloved, first and foremost, I have a question to ask you. Do you know that God is a consuming fire? If you did not know this, you better know now that he is a lake of fire and he is now burning everywhere. The above introductory chorus forms the theme of this gospel. Let me bring this fact to your knowledge. The great magnificent light that is now in your midst did not exist among mankind before this time. Recall the conversation between our Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples. Then after that said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. St. John chapter 11, verse 7 to 10. The first lesson reveals expressly that you are the light of the world, and also that you are the city set on the top of the hill which cannot be hidden. Have you not realized that you are the light which is set on the hilltop? The entire herbalist, Nicomancer, witches, and wizards and other perpetrators of evil all over the world are running helter skelter due to the radiance of the light that is revealing all evil deeds hitherto committed in the dark. The magnificent light has also brought immense Im illumination to the whole world. Spiritual chorus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Whosoever cometh to him shall never die. The light of the world. Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If you believe in him, you shall never die. It is really pathetic that you are still searching for God when he is right with you. This time is meant for the glorification of God, so the time of darkness has gone. Having known fully well that this is the age of God's glorification, why do you continue to be skeptical? And why do you continue to indulge in sinful acts? Many testimonies have come from different parts of the universe supporting the limitless 
and wonderful power of God. An example of such testimonies that affirmed the mighty power of God came from a certain member of a secret cult. His baptism into Brother of the Cross and Star discharged and acquitted him. You have to realize that the light of the world has descended to the earth plain and wherever he is found, darkness cannot be found there. Darkness recedes wherever he emerges. The impacts of this light. The presence of this light is the reason why there is always great joy whenever the children of Brother of, of the Cross and Star are found in the midst of the worldly people. The fact that the presence of the children of Brother of the Cross and Star is responsible for the radiating light in the world has been accepted. God is the light of the world. He has come to dwell with man. Though the world has not known him, you who are children of God are also the light of the world and equally the true children of the kingdom. With the understanding that you are the light, it is therefore a must that you refrain from all evil practices such as hate, medication, preparation of charm, and other diabolical and Entanglements. The reason you are asked to abhor these evil deeds is because by so doing you would have the light in you and no evil or darkness would be able to overshadow you. My piece of advice to you is that you should render good services to God and also refrain from sin. Throughout the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, he kept making reference to the Father each time he talked to his disciples. And since they were doubtful, Philip on one occasion boldly demanded to know who the Father really is. Philip and Philip said to their master, you keep mentioning the Father always. Show us who the Father is, beloved of a truth. The being you find in your midst is the Father. He is not only the Father, but also the Mother and every other thing to you. So, henceforth, you should know that the Father is in your midst and that you are the light of the world. Moses knew this fact and that was why he was not afraid when he saw the Father appear as a burning bush. You are advised not to be afraid when you find yourself encompassed by a lake of fire. Know that that is the Father. Whenever you feel serious heat within you, just know that He is richly manifesting in you. When you are with the Father, you can get into the river underneath the earth, underneath the forest and go up to the peak of a mountain to accomplish any work without being hurt. This would be possible because He, the Father, is always with you. So you should know that the Father is the accomplisher of everything. The only person who will perish is the child of perdition. You would only perish if you view with contempt the daily preaching delivered to you by the Father, I keep wondering which other sign should be shown to make you believe that God is on earth. You have been told His presence is felt in Russia, in the United Kingdom, in the United States and other parts of the world by His entire creation. Therefore, you should call the Father any moment you are in danger, you are in hunger, affliction, lack of and lack and hopeless, and he would not hesitate to appear as the only solution to your problem. It is popularly said that when the battle is too fierce, the king himself takes over command. 
by calling the Father, He, the omnipotent God, intervenes and victoriously subdues His opponents. Do believe that God is closer to you than the teeth is to the tongue. Also, have the understanding that God is a consuming fire. For by so doing, you would be seen as the light of the world. You will be liberated from whatever problem, so long as you walk in the light. Refrain from the works of iniquity and walk according to the dictates, to the dictates of God. God works in a mysterious way. His power and blessings are sufficient to everybody. Hideous activities of darkness cease completely when he is at work. Endeavor to ad adhere to the admonitions from God. These admonitions include demonstrating love for one another, desisting from causing division, fighting and seeking exalted positions. Your advice to particularly, your advice to practically demonstrate these virtues of God, because if you adhere to them, you are with God, and consequently has abundant supply of everything. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, Saint Matthew chapter five verse fourteen: Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The light of redemption. Beloved, is the above statement that reveals you as the light of the world strange in your ears? Rise up and go into the streets and cities and impart the teaching of God to all and sundry. This time is not meant for you to array yourself in gorgeous attires and attend ceremonies, worship idols, or indulge in fighting, quarreling, litigation, and preparation of charm. This is also not the time for anybody to seek self-praises, self-recognition, or self-glorification. There is neither day nor night in the kingdom. Every second is the same in the light of God. And since God is always with you, all your deeds are not hidden from Him. It is therefore pertinent to give thanks to God for revealing these great facts to us and also providing the possibility for us to know and accept him. Women liberation is divine. It is an indisputable fact that in times past women hardly could measure up with man with men in any field of human endeavor. But the reverse is the case today. The Father has come to make women the rulers and owners of the world. In South Africa today, all secrets have been exposed. All distinguished personnel in government circles and many other persons alleged to have engaged in one form of fraudulent activity or the other have been summoned to give account of their deeds. You should realize that indulging in sin is unprofitable. Shun sins and draw closer to God because God is all and in all. Since you have always cried and lamented that you are fatherless, he has no come to comfort you and also be your father. Express gratitude, express gratitude and joyously shout hallelujah. For the Father has come to redeem mankind. Beloved, put your hope in the Father, for he will never deceive you. He has openly said 
You who are his child should not lament, cry and weep anymore, for the Savior is not on the way to you, but is right in your midst with you. In the past, no matter the wealth owned by a woman, she was always considered insignificant, and so could not know what to do with the enormous wealth. Women had always looked up to their husband for everything, but the situation is different today. Women have been liberated from the slavery and bondage of man, and the age-long chains of servitude have been broken since they have the solid support of the Father. Women should no longer be intimidated, humiliated, and considered insignificant. This is the time of total liberation in the entire world. It is worthwhile knowing that the women all over the Brotherhood Kingdom came all out to celebrate their week-long 30th anniversary. Interestingly, all of them remained with the Father from the beginning to the end of the celebration and the Father worked continuously in them. The whole world has been liberated through the women. The Holy Spirit has come to the earth to keep the women's flag flying. Men should continue to men should men could continue to be deceived, but no woman can be deceived anymore. God honors his word. The reason why I have to deliver this gospel is in order to reveal what I have in store for you. The various mysteries and the illustrations you will come across as you read along have much to do with the saying that the word is God and God is the word. Therefore, you are advised not to trample on the word of God, rather you should attach great importance to it. If you adhere to this advice, you would begin to have a greater understanding of yourself, much more than you used to have. We have heard that God is light, and as light he radiates wisdom, understanding, and directs our daily activities. In the generation of Noah, God destroyed the earth with water and according to him, a consuming fire shall destroy the present generation. <coughs> Take your mind to what happened to the generation of Noah. When God instructed Noah to build an ark, the people of that time were disturbed, surprised and worried. They asked, why no I should build an ark when there is no river? Also, Noah had ceaselessly preached and disclosed to the people that the time for God's destruction of the world was near. But Noah's preaching fell on deaf ears. He was considered a lunatic. Nobody hearkened to Noah's preaching. Rather, all he said was viewed with contempt. They were preoccupied in seeking to know why God should use water to destroy the world. To prove the fact that God is the Word and the Word is God, immediately, immediately Noah had completed the ark, the irrevocable Word of God manifested. God earnestly honors every word that proceeds from his mouth. So, if there is anything you would not toy with, it should be the word of God. The prophesied flood, which was to be the agent of the destruction of no generation, started with just scanty drizzling of rain. The people had considered the rain as incapable of causing any meaningful destruction but eventually the tide of the flood rose steadily and persistently and permanently destroyed the whole generation 
with the exception of Noah and those in the ark who abided by the instructions of God. The unpredictability of God. Similarly, in the time of Lot, God also revealed that he will use fire to destroy the world. The people found it difficult to believe what God said, since by this time, the ways of making fire had not been invented. In fact, fire was unknown. For that reason, they wondered how possible then it was for the world to be destroyed by fire. They reasoned that way, forgetting that God himself was a consuming fire. Lot had continued to preach to the people and ceases and ceaselessly referring to the frightful flood that had wiped out an entire generation during the time of Noah. A few people hearkened, a few people hearkened to the preaching of Lot, while the rest claimed it was impossible for such a disaster to occur. But in the end, the two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were completely destroyed by fire. In the present generation, you have seen the Father and have as well heard that He will again destroy the world with fire. In preparing for the time when such devastation will take place, you have gathered fire extinguishers and stored up items in readiness to put out such fire whenever it ventures to cause havoc? If I may ask, who can quench the fire set by God? He is a consuming fire and he, does, and he does everything at his will. Man cannot predict the actions of God because God's wisdom supersedes that of man. Since you are the light of the world, you should refrain from sin and possess the qualities of God. The scriptures have enjoined that let him which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house in Matthew 24 verse 17. God is unpredictable. The more you carry out researches about him and his ways, the more you are confounded and the more elusive he becomes. Again, the scriptures enjoin thus. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the, of the word, that ye may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted that the lord is gracious that was one peter first peter chapter 2 verses 2 to 3 an illustration of destiny after reading minutely this is this illustration you would understand how God is and how he works. There lived a certain woman who had a chain of revelations that firstly, she would give birth to a male child. Secondly, the child will be crowned a king and eventually a lion will kill him. Since the woman had no child, the prophecy came as a surprise and she was greatly disturbed. After some time, as predicted, the revelation started manifesting in rapid succession. The woman truly became pregnant and gave birth to a male child. The boy grew rapidly into a successful businessman. Next, a fulfillment of the second part of the revelation. The community assembled together and unanimously decided to crown him their king. But one surprising thing to everybody when the day of his crowning came was that he did not belong to the royal household. 
the reasoning and tradition of the people gave way to providence and the title of the king was conferred on him. It was during this conferment ceremony that his mother recalled the second part of the prophecy which was now fulfilling. There was great joy and merriment on that day of his proclamation as the king. Now the first and second parts of the prophecy have manifested. What was left was the third part which revealed that the young man will, would be killed by a lion and the knowledge of this greatly distressed and caused immense uneasiness in the young man's parents. The word of God is irrevocable. The parents thought deeply of how to prevent the remaining part of the frightful prophecy from fulfilling. After such thinking, they conceived a possible way. They planned to erect a very gigantic building with stories. The building should be properly fenced with a strong iron gate. Also, the security network to be provided should be the best in the world. These plans were carried out promptly. Although the reason for all these was unknown to anybody except the king and his parents, it should be noted that the king was regarded as the most honorable and distinguished person in the community, so he was held in high esteem and approached with reverence and awe. To ensure maximum security, he occupied the topmost story. Bear in mind that all these securities were provided as a way of stopping the manifestation of the third prophecy. The wisdom of God is transcendent. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the wisdom of God higher than the wisdom of man. The earth is God's footstool, while heaven is his throne. And since everything is under his command, he creates and destroys so that his word will always come to fulfillment in the end. The young man's parents were not familiar with the saying that man proposes, but God disposes. After everything has been done to provide tight security for the king, do not forget that God's ways are mysterious. The king's parents forgot that according to the tradition of that community, the king after his coronation must wear a band of lion's teeth around his neck as part of the king's regalia and nobody was to violate this rule. Accordingly, after the coronation, he was taken to the topmost floor of the building while instructions were issued to the security guards to remain most vigilant and alert. Bear in mind that the king's parents all along taught the prophesied lion to be a real lion and eventually when it was time for the will of God to manifest, the child or king, after a colorful ceremony, went home after being thoroughly exhausted to have some rest. Since the king was to wear the regalia always, he went to bed with the band of lion's teeth around his neck, and mysteriously, one of the teeth pierced into his throat and he died instantly. This is of providence. Nobody can alter what has been ordained. We examine the golden text. Golden text Hebrews chapter 12 verses 28 to 29. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom 
which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and great fear. For our God is a consuming fire. A stern warning, beloved, the above illustration is to enable you to understand who God is and how he works. You have been advised to use this opportunity to enrich yourself with the virtues of God. This should serve as a stern warning. You should be careful when God issues an order. It is not possible to hide from God when he does his things. Therefore, you should not disobey his instruction, knowing fully well that he is a consuming fire. God rewards everybody according to his work. Beloved, a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let he who have ears to hear, hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the whole world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.